So, continuing with the multiplier applications uh, before we come to other types of multipliers, uh, we will just ponder over certain aspects of the phase detector. We saw that a multiplier when we give an input let us say a sin omega t and another b sin omega t plus phi will give you a b sin omega t sin omega t plus phi by 20 which will have a component cos phi okay, dc component dependent upon phase, but it is uh, non-linearly related. Suppose therefore, we are interested in a linear phase detector. So, what should we do? <coughs> it is enough if we make the amplitude of no consequence. What it means is we feed the inputs to limiters or comparators which will just limit the amplitude to a certain value. Okay? So, the communication engineers call these limiters. Bas they basically, they are comparators, voltage comparators. So, we have comparators to which we are feeding the two inputs. which are going to have this kind of relationship, let us say, this is going to be, let us say, V i 1, this is V i 2, and therefore, if V i 1 is this way, let us say, V i 2 is going to be differing in phase by a certain amount. If you feed this kind of input to this, automatically we see that at the output, okay, this simply gets limited to and this will be delayed by an amount corresponding to the phase shift, right? So, so this is how it is going to be. And therefore, now if we multiply one with the other, okay, assuming that both of these things go to the maximum limit, let us say 10, 10 volts or whatever it is. Right? So, we get an output that is when uh, both are positive or both are negative, we will get positive output. When one is positive and another is negative, we will get negative. Right? So, in which case we will get an output corresponding to, okay, for this uh, amount of time, will have it negative and then for the rest of the time will have it positive. So, within a time period t that's, and this is let us say tau, we have this going through a periodicity okay, twice right, because this is going to be tau, this is going to be T by 2 minus tau, right? This again tau, this is going to be T by 2. Indicating clearly that there is a 2 omega component corresponding to the omega component of the input as expected, because we saw in earlier situation also we had two omega component and a DC component here corresponds to what? Let us say this is uh, 10 volts, this is minus 10 volts let us say. Okay. 
okay. So, it is going to be minus 10 into tau okay, plus 10 into t by 2 minus tau by t by 2. That is what is called the average component which will correspond to t by 2 that is 10 okay, minus okay, minus 10 tau minus 10 tau minus 20 tau or minus 40 tau by t. Is this clear or not? Therefore, you get here clear cut linear phase relationship okay, between the average okay, linear relation between the average and the phase star. Okay. So, this is a very simple phase detail. What you have therefore got to do is get rid of the amplitude information by passing it through a limiter and then do the multiplication. Right. So, this is the multiplied output. Okay. So, I am stressing this point here because this is one of the important applications of that multiplier which we had called as balanced modulator which will again uh, recollect when we are going to discuss phase lock loop. Okay. So, this detail information that if you pass it through a comparator set of comparator the relationship between the phase and the average becomes linear. If you do not do it, then also there is a relationship between phase and uh, this uh, what is that uh, output uh, average and the phase, but it is non linear cos cosine relationship. Okay. So, this is what you have to remember. If again you can also consider as a homework problem, assume one is sine wave not coming through limiter because one input we do not have any say in voltage what is the PLL. Okay. One input comes from okay, outside, the other input to the phase detector is generated within. So, that we can limit it to a value. right? So, that can be made high. So, when one is a sine wave, another is a square wave okay, and there is a phase relationship. Okay between these two waveforms, then what is the average? Okay. This also you please do as a homework problem. Have we understood? We have done and shown here that when both are sinusoids, the phase relationship is cos phi. When one is sinusoid, another is square wave. Okay. What is the relationship between the average okay, and the phase? So, please find out this later. Then, when both are square waves, we see that it is perfectly linear. And you can see here for a phase shift of let us say 0, output is 10 volts. For phase shift of uh, let us say uh, pi by 2, tau is t by 4. Okay. So, phase output is 0. Okay. For a phase shift of what is that pi, okay. it is minus, minus 10. So, it is a linear relationship going from 10, 0 to minus 10. So, you can plot this characteristic. Is it clear? And what will it be on this side for the negative? Same thing. So, it 
repeats itself. This is the characteristic of this phase detector, right? Because it is not able to distinguish between phase lead and phase lag. Because it is not able to detect this kind of phase lead or phase lag, we are necessarily required to locate our quiescent phase shift at phi by 2. That means, we subject one of the inputs to an additional phase shift of phi by 2. Then what happens is, how do we subject one of the inputs to additional phase shift of phi by 2? If you have two waveforms whose phase you want to detect properly, you make the one of the waveforms go through an integration or differentiation straight operation. That is the only thing which gives independent of frequency a phase shift of pi by 2. So, that means additional phase shift of pi by 2 must be subjected to as far as one input is concerned and then you apply. Then what happens is we can now distinguish from the output whether the two waveforms are leading or lagging because you can get okay, correspondingly different signs. The magnitude of DC voltage will remain the same for the same phase magnitude but uh, depending upon whether it is leading or lagging, you will get a positive or negative DC voltage. Is it clear? So, that is why we must have necessarily a quiescent phase shift. Okay. This is important that you understand this concept here, like you have quiescent DC level for operating an amplifier both on positive going signal side and negative going signal side. In order to give a proper dynamic range for the phase detector, you must have some phase shift constant. It is not necessary that it should be phi by 2, but if you have phi by 2, then it is obvious that you will get the maximum dynamic range. Okay? It could be any value okay, between 0 and phi by 2, but we select it as phi by 2, so that we get the maximum dynamic range for phase variation on either side of this okay. and it is easy to give it a phase shift of pi by 2 than any other phase shift okay, which is fixed with respect to frequency. So, this is something that you have to understand okay, in order to understand uh, anything about phase detector, wherever phase detectors are used. So, for any phase detector of this type for that matter whether you use the comparator or no comparator, the phase characteristics will be either this triangular or what sinusoidal that is all. Okay. So, it will be triangular or sinusoidal that is all. And when the phase uh, error is very small, it looks linear, this, these are all valid. Okay. So, it changes its characteristics from sinusoidal characteristics to linear characteristics the moment we make it okay, amplitude independent. I would like you to also compare this with a phase detector just by using an AND gate. Instead of doing all this, okay, you can just AND these two outputs. Even then you get a linear phase detector. So, just AND or AND or, or the output, you can get a exactly linear phase. The difference is the frequency component of the output will now be omega itself, it does not become 2 omega. The multiplication make it makes it go to 2 omega and average, whereas here the difference between that and this is that the uh, next component here comp happens to be 2 omega, whereas in the other circuit it is omega. So, that also is a phase detector. If you do not mind the error uh, voltage that is unfiltered part okay, corresponding to that of omega because the corresponding to that of 2 omega it can you can filter it more easily than corresponding to that of omega. Okay. So, since you have to find out the average what it means is the low frequency component you therefore, uh, could prefer perhaps this one because the output will be 2 omega and DC. So, this is an important 
application of the multiplier or balance modulator that we have to remember whenever we discuss about, uh, let's say, phase lock loop uh, application. We'll bring this about once again later. What is the important parameter associated with the phase detector? The phase detector sensitivity. What is phase detector sensitivity? This is equal to delta V average divided by delta tau or delta phi. Okay. In fact, you can put this as V average as this or 10 minus 40 pi by 2 pi in any mode, angle mode or time mode. Okay. So, so phase detector sensitivity is an important parameter which is called KPD. We will call it. Remember, which is the sensitivity of the average voltage to phase variation. Delta V average by delta phi is called KPD. In this case, how much is it? Minus 40 divided by 2 pi for this one. And this for this one, it happens to be linear and therefore, uh, this is valid at all operating points. In case you are using the other type, okay, where amplitude limitation is not brought about, then also you will get the same value, okay? but only thing is it is valid only around the operating point. Okay? So, <coughs> we will see how uh, this can be used in assessing the performance of phase lock loop later. But therefore, please do remember how you can build a phase detector using multipliers or balance modulators. Now, we will again see another important application of uh, the multiplier that is in the design of what is called voltage control oscillator, because this also forms a part of a PLL okay? and it just happens to be an important application of the multiplier. Let us see voltage control oscillator. I had already discussed this partly. I told you that one way of building an voltage controlled oscillator is to have a Schmitt trigger that is a circuit with positive feedback. Okay, regenerative positive feedback, which is called Schmitt trigger, and a multiplier, and an integrator. So, this becomes a nice voltage control oscillator. Let us just go through the motions of how this works. Because this is a Schmitt trigger, we know that the output can be only plus or minus V s. Okay? Output can be plus or minus V s. It cannot be at any other point okay? because of the regenerative feedback. So, if this is plus or minus V s, this can only be plus minus Vs into Vc by 10. And therefore, this current can be either charging or discharging the capacitor by an amount which is Vs Vc by 10 R, right, which is uh, plus or minus. Okay. When it is going like this, it will charge the capacitor this way. That means, voltage will be either going this way by an amount which is V s 
by 10 R C V C into T or it will be going this way by okay, V S this will be minus slope this will be plus slope. Is this clear? Because this is the current DC current going into capacitor I by C into T is the voltage variation across the capacitor is going on decreasing or increasing at this rate. Okay. So, this will generate what a triangular waveform. Obviously, the change of state occurs here when this goes to okay, when this goes to when this is at plus V s this should go to minus V s then only the voltage here becomes equal to 0 only when this voltage becomes same as this voltage okay it gets into the regenerative feedback mode okay it goes into the active region that it has the regenerative feedback and therefore immediately it will change state from plus to minus okay so what happens this is going to be plus vs and this is going to be minus vs so what happens to this this is twice vs okay if the voltage change across the capacitor, this is plus V, this is minus within a time interval of T by 2, if you because this is periodic. So, if this is T by 2, this has to be T by 2 because charging and discharging occur for the same interval of time. Okay. So, twice V s is equal to V s V c by 10 R c into T by 2, and this is what we get V s gets cancelled. So, we get T as equal to how much is it? T is equal to 40 R c by V c or F is equal to 1 over T equals V c by 40 R c. This is what I mentioned about as being the what? Frequency of oscillation. Now, this is the frequency of oscillation of our V C over here, which is going to have triangle waveform here and square waveform here. Okay. Now, an important parameter associated with the V C O is delta F divided by delta V C or this is called K V C O or it is called V C O sensitivity. How much is it in this case? 1 by 40 R C. Okay. Is this clear? Or this is uh, can be written as same as F by V C. F is equal to V c by 40 R c. So, delta F by delta V c is F by V c. So, this again forms an important parameter to be made use of in our discussion later about phase lock loops. And essentially a phase detector and a V c O form uh, the important building blocks of a phase lock loop. Okay. And we have seen here how the multiplier has made it become a nice linear voltage controlled oscillator. So, the V C O you have seen gives you triangle output, square wave output, but obviously no sine wave output is there if you in case you need a sine wave output and you can generate that sine wave output using a diode function generator which is a piecewise linear approximation of converting a triangle to sine wave. So, this is what is done really in what is called a function generator IC chip, wherein depending upon the accuracy you de desire, normal accuracy with which you can generate a sine wave is about 3 to 5 percent distortion. Okay. In fact, an easy way of converting a triangle to sine wave is by simply hitting at the top and the bottom, right. That means, making it go through a non saturation nonlinearity okay 
So, just remove the peaks and it becomes a rough sine wave. Now, we will see how <coughs> we can obtain a high frequency VCO. We already know how a high frequency phase detector can be obtained huh? using a balanced modulator circuit which we have discussed in our multiplier discussion. Let us now see how a high frequency voltage control oscillator can be obtained which is suitable for use of PLL at very high frequencies. Now, <coughs> the basic principle underlying this is similar to what just now we have seen with op amps. Obviously, I must have a current which is dependent upon voltage. How do I get a current dependent upon voltage in a very simple manner? Huh? Trans conductor, huh? isn't it? A voltage can be converted to current by using a trans conductor. Using a transistor, therefore, it becomes very simple. If I use V C here and V, yes, here, let us say what happens? The current in this is, this is R, what is it? V s, okay, there is a drop here, plus minus uh, V gamma, so V s minus V gamma minus V c by R. So, you have now got a current which is dependent upon voltage in a linear fashion, very simple. Have you understood this? This is the simplest circuit you can think of by putting a resistor here, of course, externally if you desire, so that you can change this current okay, of charging. Just by using a transistor like this, we are able to convert it into a current okay, which is dependent upon this resistance well. So, this is a current. But we are not happy with this because V gamma is changing with temperature etcetera. So, we would like to convert this. So, let us see. I am trying to synthesize this now. So, I will put it anyway this way right? and I will apply the V c to this. There will be a drop of E gamma and there is a rise of E gamma. So, the voltage appearing here is V c, drop of E gamma, rise of E gamma. So, the voltage here is simply V c, if the two V gammas can match and uh, track with respect to temperature, this is so. So, in order that they should be the same, what is the primary criteria? They should operate at the same current, because that is a forward voltage drop dependent upon our, the operating current. So, I have now current mirror coming to my rescue. Okay. So, I will put a current mirror here. So, as to make this operate at the same current as this. Have you understood this or not? So, this transistor and this transistor are operating at the same current and if I now connect this, The current leaving this is going to be how much? What is it? This current is going to be, this is going to be V c now. So, V s minus V c by R and this is going to be the same current. So, I have now been able to obtain a very nice compensated transconductor which is capable of charging okay, a capacitor. I want to charge a capacitor now. So, let us say I will connect this current over to the capacitor. So, what happens now? This capacitor is going to get charge and voltage is going to increase at a rate 
which is nothing but V s minus V c by R c into C. Is this clear? Fine. This voltage is now going to be sensed by let us say it can be buffered first, okay. That means you can use a common collector stage and connect it over to we will discuss this later. I think we have already discussed this. A Schmidt trigger what is a Schmidt trigger? This we have discussed. This Schmidt trigger has to be a fast Schmidt trigger. That means it is going to be a differential amplifier with positive feedback. Okay. So, this circuit we have discussed earlier in the beginning, but still I can tell you what it is going to be looking like. So, we will remove this. This is your differential amplifier, but I am not going to draw it in that manner. It is emitter coupled okay. and then you have a that common emitter resistance and you have a collector resistance for both of these. Right. Then you have to give positive feedback. Okay, this is the other input. So from this input, you give positive feedback to this. This is uh, you don't want to use resistors. You have to have some feedback coming through. Okay, so-called simulated resistors. This is nothing but a forward biased diode here and a resistor. So this essentially forms okay a Schmidt trigger. I would like you to again analyze this Schmidt trigger and obtain its what characteristic in terms of at what value of voltage input voltage it will come down from high to low and at what value of voltage it will go from low to high. So that means it has transition points. Let us say as soon as it reaches a high, okay, it changes state. Okay. As soon as it as it changes state, we want what do we want to do? We want to discharge this capacitor by means of the same current. It should flow in the opposite direction. Now this please follow me. So th the current is flowing like this. See the novelty of this whole stuff. I would like to discharge this. So assume that I am now going to disconnect this somehow. I have to use a switch okay, and make this current flow through this okay, in such a manner that it is going to discharge I will once again use a current mirror to this current is now diverted onto this okay, so that the same current is extracted from this. Please remember this capacitor voltage is already high. So, it is going to bias this properly. Okay. So, you can go on discharging it until V gamma is reached, there is no problem. Okay. So, it will keep on discharging this until this lower voltage is reached. At which point of time, once again this switch should be closed and this should be switched off. Okay. So, we have to have another switch here. one switch here, another switch here. Right? This is going to be closed and this is going to be open. Okay? Then what happens? This is disabled, not biased. So, current is going to be pumped into this and it will keep on charging. Now, what is this switch? This switch is merely a 
diode. Diode. There is no need for, you will see any sophisticated switch here, a simple diode is sufficient. Let us see how. When this switch is open, naturally this current has to be pumped into the capacitor through the diode, diode gets forward biased, it is closed, right. Okay. So the current is charging the capacitor, this voltage keeps on increasing. The moment this switch is connected, when will it be connected? The moment it reaches high. When will it, we know that? By detecting the Schmitt trigger output. So this will give us an indication how, okay, I have to disconnect this or connect it. So the moment this is connected, now what happens? This diode is reverse biased because the potential has been pulled down to ground potential. So, this has been pulled down to ground potential and this is at high. So, automatically this diode is reverse biased. So, this is off and the current is getting pumped into this and current mirror is going to discharge the capacitor by the same amount of current. See the simplicity of the circuit. This can work up to very high frequencies up to megahertz or okay, even higher without much of a problem okay, because only these uh, transistors are involved. Okay. So now only thing is what is the switch that is going to be here? This is again very simple. It has to be a what? Transistor switch and it has to get the command from this. right? Now, I have to make sure that this transistor goes to what? Saturation. That means the base drive has to be sufficient such that this divided by beta minimum is given to this. So, this is current driven switch. Okay. So, you cannot connect it here because this will always be high or higher that is all. Okay. So, you have to put another differential stage here. Now, that is what I was telling you. If you put a resistor, it will depend upon the voltage, right? Whereas, we do not want it to depend upon any voltage, okay? Either current is going to be there or no current is going to be there. We have to make sure of that. So, that means we put a something like this okay comparator here and this is okay a current switch this is a differential amplifier which will either give current to this or to this depending upon the voltage here okay so this current is going to be zero or the full current whatever it is required that current can be adjusted okay because this voltage is fixed right so you can therefore make a neat circuit and this is that of what this is the internal circuitry of 566 six, which is available as a linear voltage controlled oscillator 566 six is a linear voltage controlled oscillator the internal circuitry of it is already given to you okay all this okay as part of a pll 565 okay the circuit is the same the vco used in 565 is same as 566 okay so basic circuit is essentially the same i request you to find out okay what as a homework problem find out vh and vl for the Schmidt trigger which is necessary in order to find out the frequency of oscillation. What is the frequency of oscillation? V s minus V c by R c into T by 2 is equal to V h minus V l that is necessary. So, T is equal to how much is it? 2 R c okay, V h minus V l 
divided by Vs minus Vc or F frequency of oscillation is Vs minus Vc by 2 Rc Vh. So, in order to know the uh, KVCO value, you should definitely know what Vh minus Vl is going to be. Okay, and that is the VCO, which is one of the VCOs popularly available in bipolar technology. Okay. Other VCO is what is called emitter coupled multivibrator. Okay. This is also a multivibrator kind of thing, right? Which is also being used in some of the other PLLs. We'll discuss it in the next class. Okay. Emitter coupled multivibrator. In some of your uh, undergraduate classes, it might have been discussed. Okay. It is the emitters are coupled by means of a single capacitor, and there is regenerative positive feedback from collector to base and collector to base. Okay. So, this circuit we will discuss in the next class.